Hello, Accelerated Math 6-7 students. We have finally made it. We are starting 7th grade standard. Um, so this will be Module 7, Lesson 1. And I can't even open my book because I ran out of room to record the page numbers. Hopefully you didn't. Um, so go ahead and open up that page. Make sure you keep writing down your titles and your table of contents. Um, the title of today's lesson is called Measuring Rate and Proportional Relationships. Okay, Measuring Rate and Proportional Relationships. So this should um, hopefully jog your memory because we are going back to working in ratios and proportional rela relationships, which is what we started out sixth grade with. Um, our goal for today, today we will learn to determine unit rates related to ratios of quantities measured in different units and determine if they are proportional. So we're taking a big jaunt down memory lane. The question that I want you to be thinking about is, what does the unit rate represent in a proportional relationship? Okay, so we're going to check this out. Target.com is selling Xbox One games. The sale that they have right now is four games for $203. And then, just checking things out, Amazon.com is also selling the same game. And their sale is four games for $198. So looking at that, you can automatically decide that you're going to get a better deal at Amazon, but we want to find out what is the unit rate for each game. So what does the cost of one game cost, just those being their sales. Um, and so your job is, what is the unit price for each store? So we're going to figure that out. Now this is going way back to the beginning of the school year. Hopefully you remember that the best way to solve for unit rate or unit price is to set up the rate that you're comparing. So in target.com, we're comparing the money to the number of games. So I set up a um, rate so that you have money on the top and games on the bottom, and your units are very, very important, so you need to make sure that you always label them. And it told us that the cost for four games is $203. So I put the cost on the top line, and then I put the number of games down on the bottom line. So the cost is going to be our numerator, um, the number of games is going to be our denominator, and we're trying to find how to get to one. We know that four games cost $203, so now we're trying to figure out what would one cost. So if you remember the multiplicative identity, you're going to try to get from four to one. In order to do that, you have to divide by four. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. That's the multiplicative part. We could multiply it by one-fourth, and it would be the same thing. So you know 4 divided by 4 is 1, so now we have to take 203 and divide it by 4, and that gives us, and we're talking about money, so let's go ahead and put in our decimal, okay? Um, so this was 0 for that would be 3, 5 would be 30, um, and then 7, and 8, and then 800 left over, bring that down, okay, and then we have 1. So one game cost $50.75 to buy it from Target.com, okay? All right, now let's check out Amazon.com and see what we get. So again, going from 4 to 1, you're going to divide by 4. What you do to one side, you have to do the other. Now we're going to take 198 and divide it by 4. And we're going to see how much these games cost. Because of this money, again, you're going to put in your decimal point, and we know that each game costs at Amazon $49.50. $49.50. So my question is, which store would you rather buy from? $50.75 or $49.50? It's pretty close, actually, if you look at it. Um, another 50 cents down here, and you would be at 50 and then 75 cents more, so um, maybe a dollar 25 more. Um, so then the question is, you've got to figure out, using your unit price now, you've got to determine where, hold on, let me zoom out so you can see it, um, where would you buy as many games as you could if you could spend $3,000? So you've got to figure out which one um, is going to give you the actual better deal when you have $3,000 to uh, spend. I'm guessing that it would be Amazon, but you know, with only about a dollar and a half or a dollar and um, 
that he likes that's different, it might be worth it. So you have $3,000 to spend. The question is, is how many games can you get? So you're going to set it up for Target. And you know that um, for Target.com, the, the cost of a game is $50.75 for one game. So the question is, if you have $3,000 to spend, so the question is, how do you get from here to there? Okay. Again, doing the same thing for Amazon.com, you know that they charge $49.50 per game. So the question is, how many games could you get for $3,000? All right. And so those are the two that I'm going to be checking when I check your notes tomorrow to make sure that see which one you or how many total games you figured out for each store and where you would want to buy them. All right. So not hard, not anything majorly new, just a, a great big um, review of switching our mindset back into rates and proportional relationships. So our goal for today, today we will learn how to determine unit rates related to ratios of quantities measured in different units and determine if they are proportional. Um, and the question is, what does the unit rate represent in the proportional relationship? The answer to that question is, it is the um, standard amount for one. Okay, So it's the rate of change. It's how something changes. So if you bought one, you would know the cost. But if you bought two, then you would add another one. And so every time you're increasing it by the one value. So that's how you get the rate of change. All right. So that's all I have for you in this lesson. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.